Glock pistols are often known for their polymer frames and what's referred to as a safe action trigger. And Glock has produced a series of polymer frame semi-automatic pistols designed and produced by Glock Guess MBH in Deutschwarm, Austria. The Glock 17 was the first pistol produced by Glock and despite the fear of the plastic gun of the early 80s, it became Austria's new military police handgun in 1982. So we're gonna take a look at 10 things you probably didn't know about this awesome handgun, the Glock 17. Number one, today 65% of US law enforcement agencies use the Glock 17. More so, there are military and police forces throughout the entire planet with over 60 countries using the Glock 17 as their military sidearm. And not to mention all the aspects of selling these firearms to civilians for personal defense. And ultimately what you have is you have one of the most used sidearms on the planet, the Glock 17. Number two, the inventor of Glock 17, Gaston Glock, was never a gun manufacturer at all. As a matter of fact, he was a chemical engineer and what he specialized was a process called ferric nitrocarbonizing, which essentially pulled nitrogens and carbons out of any substance to really greatly harden it. Now, ferric nitrocarbonizing was originally invented in England and it was done to harden steels for extreme breakage and pistons and engine blocks and that sort of thing. So Gaston Glock used this technology to produce rods and knives for the Austrian military out of his garage. Number three, in 1980, Gaston Glock bought an injection molding machine and he was the first to mold plastics and use this phoretic nitrocarbonizing on polymers. And that's how he sustained such a tough, tough, hard polymer was through this process. And he was the first one to do that. Some of his earliest employees were actually camera manufacturers that used this plastic molding process to design camera parts. In 1980, Austria announced that it would be seeking tenders to replace the Walter P-38 as their military and police sidearm. However, Austria was using a ridiculous testing process. This testing process that they were using really challenged some of the major gun manufacturers of its time. But Gaston Glock believed he was up for the challenge with his polymer products. Besides a long list these guns must have to include, it had to be a nine millimeter, a nine plus capacity, and had to be no more than 58 parts in the components. But the testing process also include no more than 20 malfunctions in 10,000 rounds. More so at 15,000 rounds, they would inject a highly pressurized nine millimeter parabellum upwards of 73,000 PSI, double the maximum pressure limit for a nine millimeter. And after that, it still had to be a perfectly usable pistol. So Glock put his team of chemists and camera makers together, and they created the Glock 17. And of course, as you know, when all was said and done, it was the Glock 17 that came out on top. Number five, a lot of people think that Glock 17 is called the Glock 17 because it was the 17th design. That is not accurate. It is the 17th patent that Glock held. Earlier patents were things like rods and knives and camera parts. But the Glock 17 was the very first gun that Glock produced. Number six, many people don't realize the guns that Glock outperformed in that high stress Austrian military test. On that massive list is the H&K P7M8, the P7M13, and the P9S. Also, Sig Sauer at the time was out of Switzerland. They put in the P220 and the P226 as their contenders. Also on that list was Beretta out of Italy. They put in the 92 SBF. F.N. Herstel inserted the Browning High Power and Steyr Mannlicher, the GB. These are all outstanding guns, and the Glock 17, the very first gun that Gaston Glock produced, blew them all out of the water. Number seven, in 1985, the U.S. Department of Defense was seeking a new sidearm to replace the 1911. They invited Glock to bring their Glock 17 to this testing. However, Glock declined their offer simply because the Department of Defense had a ridiculous retooling request um, on these guns, more so, they wanted 35 samples in a really short period of time, and not only could Glock not retool in that short of time, but quite honestly, they didn't have any interest in it, so they politely declined. If it wasn't for this, I believe the Glock 17 would have blown the 92 away, and Beretta would not be manufacturing our sidearm, it would be Glock. 
Number eight, later that same year, Sweden and Norwegian testing took place over the Glock 17 to replace their military sidearms. Now, the reason that's of particular interest is they use NATO standards for testing, so when they were finished, this Glock 17 received a NATO classified sidearm, so therefore any NATO country can use the Glock 17 as their sidearm. And of course, many do. Number nine, the Glock 17 was not the first polymer-framed striker-fired pistol. In fact, in 1970, H&K had a polymer-framed striker-fired pistol. But even earlier, in 1907, it was Ross Steyer who invented the very first striker-fired pistol, the 7.65 millimeter Ross Steyer 1907. And finally, number 10, the Glock 17 uses a modified Browning cam lock system for charging and recharging a semi-auto system adapted from the high power pistols. So there you go, there's your top 10 list. Ultimately what you have is you have a gun that takes some design from Browning and Steyr and you put together a chemical engineer and a bunch of camera manufacturers and what you have is the Glock 17. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. You can also now find us on Facebook under God Family Guns, but by far the most important part of this YouTube channel is it is a ministry and we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that stuff in. Thank you for watching this episode of God Family Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.